gentlemen, I have my chair back and I am the new 50-50 crown champion. So it's been a good day <sighs> of overtime. How are you guys doing? Especially you, James. I'm How never going to live this down. Nice. This is the 50-50. I don't even know why I do it anymore. Are you okay? I, I'm not. I don't I'm care. I'm not. I'm scarred. I still don't care. <laughs> Still doesn't care. Don't care. It's so hot. I, I tried. I tried. I feel do nothing do in here. I feel nothing in here. <laughs> it's empty. Well, after my crown, I'm having a great day. It's been a great day of overtime so far, and we've got a world championship to talk about here, guys. These teams. We have ten teams for the first time ever. Four from Europe, four from North America, and two for o, from OCE. First time they're gonna be here. That's the huge story we're mm -hmm. pushing, as well as all these other teams that have made it. Some of these guys have been here before. You know, we had the, 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 the title, the, the subtitle for the season was, was Old Rivals and New Challengers. And we've got both of those here at the World Championship. It's gonna be great. The first matchup, or the, we can take a look at the bracket, actually. Take a look at the bracket, as it will stand at the beginning of the play. Got some first round matchups there with the OCE teams, Denial Esports and Alpha Sydney. We now have these filled in. Northern Gaming and Jam Gaming will be playing, and then we will get into that big first quarter finals of the upper bracket. Yeah, this one uh, is going to be right off the bat testing whether or not OCE can stand up to these other regions. Population wise, they are the definite underdog. I mean, they only have a population of about 40 million in their region. Mm. NA, about 580, EU, 743. So just talking about sheer number of players available for the pool to play against, OCE is an underdog. You memorized those stats. That was good. Numbers. I mean, he has like, a Numbers, I That's did. True. Internet. I, I would just Thank guess you, that. Internet. I would guess there's somewhere there. But we'll, we'll take a look at that bracket again a little bit later. We want to talk in detail about these first matchups, the matchups that we already have lined out for us. And we'll start with Denial versus Alpha Sydney. Now, we all got to watch the OCE championships and see OCE play, see Alpha Sydney win that championship there. And they will be the number one seed from OCE, but they will be going up against the number four seed here from NA in Denial. Yeah, Denial's the team that knocked out G2. They, they were, that was That's a, a huge upset, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's a title to have, but at the same time, I think G2 really underperformed that day. So it's really hard to say, to Den I know Denial performed better than they had most of the season. They're a team that really didn't do so hot, mm -hmm. but G2 really didn't bring it to them in the way I think they could have. Yeah, and Alpha Sydney has been just at the top for what seems like the longest time. I mean, I, I've been following OC a little bit for a long time, Alpha Sydney's that team that I have heard of since the beginning. Like, they have been around. And Torsus, this was, I mentioned it uh, in 50-50, KBM player, that's this guy. He mm -hmm. somehow on KBM manages to score at least a goal a game, which is pretty fantastic. <laughs> I don't know how he does. For the uninitiated, KBM is keyboard and mouse. Did, did I, mm -hmm. I, I don't even, I think you just I did, KBM. I think I you did. You know, some people I'm don't too know. too elite. Too, you're too elite for everybody. Corrupted G has substantially less stats, especially in assists, but as you said, we were talking a little bit earlier, the OCE defense seems to be a little weaker, or maybe just they're a little more offensive altogether as a region, and it's hard to say, because now when you see someone like OCE go against someone like Denial, maybe they'll just slow it down, or maybe they look like they don't have defense against mm -hmm. some of the OCE team. It's so hard to say. Yeah, their their numbers were higher on how many goals scored were scored per game mm -hmm. in their region, but again, it's, it's hard to tell how they actually stack up, because they're playing only within their their region they yeah. haven't really gotten to play NA or EU on on an equal footing without so, like 300 ping yeah without <laughs> massive amounts of ping so this really is it's going to be a spectacle I really cannot wait to watch I'm excited to watch it you brought up him being a KBM a keyboard mouse player and for the uninitiated as well that's such a rare thing this is yes. the first KBM player to make it to land yes for RLCS so big deal there we'll see how torsos gets to play there against denial but next match northern gaming versus jam gaming the duel of the gaming here northern versus jam we will see how the number four OCE team, or the number the number two OCE team goes up against the number four EU team. But the big story for me is that Northern Gaming is playing with their sub Turbo Pulsa. Yeah, Turbo Pulsa, again, subbing in for Maestro. We talked about it earlier, Maestro not able to make it out. Turbo will fit in. He played last season on Oh My Dog, mm -hmm. and did he did relatively well for them. So it's not that bad of a sub. But uh, Jam Gaming, if you were watching the the uh, tournament this past weekend where they got second place, they had some really scary moments right there. You see being uh, tied in many, many situations. They had the overtime winner against one more. There was, and going to game seven against Sandcastle, it was scary. And now they're gonna have to go against Northern Gaming fi who finished third in both world championships back to back. And again, another player was substantially more assists per game than their North, or sorry, than their other regional equivalent, I should say. Uh, Remco with only 0.53 as opposed to nearly double for Express. And, and you know, as much as we want to talk about who's going to play better offense and defense, mechanically, OCE are still insane. Mm -hmm. the, the, we still saw some amazing highlight reel 
plays happen throughout the entire championship over there in OCE. So it really comes down to if you can execute that properly and at the right times and force a team to be in a bad spot, can they put it against Northern Gaming, especially since they have now a sub as opposed to one yeah. of their mainstays? And one of the weird things too is they all use Dominus. Mm. Oh, a yeah, lot yeah, of them yeah. use Dominus, yeah. which is it's it's it's, it's weird like the to see. Octane yeah. of North America. It, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It'll be cool, and I think it's, I, I want to get your thoughts on Turbo Pulsa specifically. This is the third season that Turbo Pulsa has been competing in. He was on, he was on Mocket back in um, season number one, mm -hmm. competing alongside Pashi. They dropped out pretty early in that land, but this is his second RLCS land, competed, as you said, on Oh My Dag in season two. A good player, but who has not been on the starting lineup here for Northern Gaming. Do you think that's a big enough, a big enough deficit for the OCE team to be able to take it to Northern Gaming here? I don't, I don't think so, because you still have Devo. Mm -hmm. You have Devo and Remco. Those guys, if they are playing well, it doesn't matter if I'm their third. They will be able to win games against <laughs> almost anybody. Man, that's a statement. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I, 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 that is a statement. I am grand champion. <laughs> that's though. definitely a lie. That's not the grand champion part, but the fact that they still win. I think, honestly, especially when it comes to land play style, it really comes to, as an individual, do you not make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And land, that's pretty much what we've seen puts people to the later rounds, and then it comes down to making sure you really work as a team. Because at this point, the stakes are so high, everyone's playing in that mixture of like timid, aggressive. Like, mm -hmm. I just don't want to let any goals in, but I also want to score. This is terrifying. There's so much money on the line. Everyone's yelling, I don't know what to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's when the panic starts to settle in. So as long as Turbo just like doesn't make any mistakes and lets Devo and Remco do what they do best, which mm -hmm. is just be amazing. Mm. I think they've got a pretty decent shot of still well, going pretty far. And I wonder with Jam, because th none of us expected Northern Gaming to be the number four seed yeah. from Europe, right? And that has to be terrifying. You talk about nerves in a land situation to know that that's the team you're facing off against. I'm sure they would have much rather had like a Penta or a Secrecy or a Resonant, some sort of or team. Or anyone, that, yeah. You know, like just, <laughs> just like a, a team that doesn't have so much of a legacy that Northern Gaming does. And we saw Turbo Pulse of playing in the third place match of EU. They, he plays well. He still yeah. knows how to play. There's nothing not to take anything away from Turbo. He just hasn't been on that starting roster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for Jam, it's got to get in their heads that we're not going against just the number four seed. We're going against Northern Gaming. Here. Yeah. And, and not only that, though, like for Northern Gaming, if you're talking about having to use a sub, you said it. And Turbo has LAN experience. So he's done this already before. And like you said, Wave, he played pretty well in that series versus mm -hmm. the leftover. He wasn't the log dragon behind the team. So uh, Northern Gaming still, even though as they're a fourth seed, they still, I would expect them to be able to take yeah. it to any team in any region. On the other side though, I, I, I really stand by the fact that I think OCE is gonna catch everyone off guard. I think their mechanical skill is gonna catch everyone off guard. And if they can just keep things relatively tight, not make huge mistakes, I think the pressure of land, them being new, and honestly, they're the ones that have so much to prove and they're the ones that are most excited to be here. Mm -hmm. I know everyone from North America, not to take anything out, or every, everyone in North America and Europe, I'm sure they're like, oh dude, I'm so happy we made it to land. Mm -hmm. but to be the first two yeah. teams yeah. of your region to ever show up here after so much time of playing on your own in your region, just kind of solitary, I think they're going to bring so much more to the plate. In Los Angeles, gonna yeah. maybe get some Korean barbecue, yeah. hang out, you know, <laughs> think, just have think, a good yeah. time. Spread the jam somewhere. That's what jam does, right? That's yeah. the thing. Spread the jam. Spread the jam. Spread it over LA. I think even I think it's a great point you bring up that even if even if these OCE teams don't get a win here, they still have already made history in RLCS of being the first two seeds to make it in from OCE. So I'm excited to see these guys play against each other. Moving on, Rogue versus Leftovers, which is clearly and decidedly the most exciting match of the first round, James. <laughs> So, that's my opinion. That's my which opinion. Which is correct. Sure. Is not, wait, no, it's not correct. I picked the other <laughs> one. I'm telling you, no. he agrees with me now. <laughs> I don't. I'm telling you guys. Now remember, Rogue used to be Atelier. Mm hmm. Uh, now we don't have to bicker and argue as to how to pronounce this name. Thank goodness. Uh, it's just Rogue now. I, I mean, I've stood by this team tried and true since the beginning. I, I absolutely love the way this team plays. I love the Matt and Sis combo. I love Turtle being their third. I think one of the more self-aware players on the pitch really has a good grasp of where to be. Very selfless player. Mm -hmm. He loves to give it up to his team. He loves to pass it. He doesn't try and take the limelight, which inherently kind of gives him the limelight from time to time. And then, you know, as James said, Matt, he's the boy. Mm. Oh yeah, runner up, you see there, 0 .90 goals per game. Fireburner took the Golden Striker Award with 0 .92 goals per game. So Matt was right there. And just in, term of the, in terms of the team's weight, 
that was being carried. Matt did a stellar job of that all season long throughout league play. And then Farah, which was the, the player, and these are both the rookies that we this had is, talked this about. This is really this funny is... because I'm looking at this and I'm realizing that Matt actually is ahead in every single stat on this page <laughs> right here. <laughs> well, well, it feels good to, to be right for, for once. I mean, it still won't matter on 50-50. I'll still always lose, apparently. But it's Matt, okay, man. It's okay. <laughs> but Matt, uh, he's, I think he's going to step up. He's, he's this rookie for LAN experience, but mm. he's been on the RLCS stage before, and he's, he's just uh, he's a stunner. He's going to do well. Now, uh, just to kind of talk about the other team, so the leftovers. Mm -hmm. One of the best storylines to ever follow us since, we've, uh, since we began here at the RLCS, the fact that even their own team name undermined themselves. Yeah. They understood coming in, eh, we'll do okay. I think even in an interview, <laughs> they wanted to be was like, Penta and Kaunos. I, I think yeah. it would be Penta and Kaunos, and then they just destroy <laughs> everyone all the way. And they end up losing to a team that I think caught everyone off guard. So it's one of those situations of they, I think, coming in, have a little more weight on them than they expected. Mm -hmm. They didn't even expect to make it to land, let alone to come in at a relatively high seed. And they're like, uh, they're, they're, I, I wasn't expecting them to beat Northern. Even with Turbo yeah. Pulsa, I thought it was going to be closer, and they yeah. just like took them out. Yeah. yeah, I was pushing at the beginning of the season, like, can you guys please change your name to like the Motley Crew or something like that? It has the same sort of meaning, but it's a little bit more like. Intimidating, like the left. It sounds like I'm opening yes. the fridge. Yeah, like, what something. am I gonna have for dinner? Mm, <laughs> That's probably how they felt. <laughs> I'm too lazy to go and actually cook some food, so I guess I'll have some leftovers here. But yeah, please, please pick up this team. Please, they're such a great team. We need. I would love for those guys to have a fantastic org. I am excited to see how these guys perform at yeah. LAN. Yeah, Snasky. Well. Snasky, so snazzy. Snasky mm. is one of those players that has had a history in RLCS as well. Sicky, obviously, you, you know the history there. Him making it to the World Championship three different times now with uh, completely different teammates mm -hmm. every single time. Snasky, he was on Supersonic Avengers, which narrowly missed out on the first season's live event by five points with yeah. how the qualifier system worked back then. So to see him finally make it yeah. with a newbie and Farah, kind of like out of, and I, I don't mean newbie in terms of playing, but he had no RLCS experience. Yep. He was completely a brand new pick. The, so the leftovers, yeah, it's they, they deserve to be here. Their name is not the greatest. I agree with you, Wave. <laughs> but maybe they'll get picked up by a sponsor. But regardless, they have proven time and time again that if it goes to a game five or game seven or whatever, they're still cool. They're gonna they're gonna win. They're, they're gonna probably gonna win. Yeah. And and they both have one player that's been there before. A turtle. Mm -hmm. You have Siki. Mm -hmm. So I think both of them are going to look to that one player, the kind of captain-esque potentially, just be like, how do I do this? How do I deal with people screaming? And Although we don't really get any booing, so don't have to worry about booing. I'll but. start booing if, if we need to. <laughs> just, just for the fun of it. You know, just to <laughs> this help is the why you lose things, James. Boo. This is why you lose boo. things. He's, he's not going to go boo. He's going to walk up and say, boo. Yeah, so like, scared. Like, <laughs> like James, this isn't how booing works. So the final matchup of day number one, James called Flipside to be the back-to-back -back Rocket League Championship Series champions here. I will be amazed if they're able to pull it off, but they have to start off against Selfless. Flipside versus Selfless, final matchup of the day. Guys, give me your thoughts. So this one, uh, you know, Flipside has been prone to losing relatively early in mm. tournaments. And Selfless is one of those teams that can surprise you with how good they play. Timmy, especially, if he's on fire working with Dapper and Miho, Selfless can do some pretty nutty things. But again, where they fall short is they play very ball chasey. They they just chase things down, they try to play fast, they just try to beat you to it, get the touch, mess you up. Whereas flip side, they like to play that calculated game. They like to use the passing plays, work with each other. And when we saw G2 play Selfless, when they played that passing game, they absolutely demolished Selfless. But to counter it as well, I think teams that do calculate a bit too much sometimes struggle against fast-paced teams. The big thing of what Genesis would do to teams like G2 is they're so fast-paced, so kind of, as you say, ball chasey to a degree. They like to bump, they like to get in their face that they never had time to calculate because they're always too busy trying to react instead. And then Greasy though, Greasy and Timmy to me, this is the story of of the third that third player. Who's mm. going to be stepping up for their team when it matters most? Greasy obviously he's not the star, but la if you were watching the the regional championship, yeah. the EU championship, he played like one. He yeah. kept them in that series. He didn't have the best league stats, but when when it really got time to put your your foot to mm -hmm. the pedal, your nose to the grindstone, he he was there for I, flip side. I think without Greasy they wouldn't be here. I think if it wasn't for Greasy in that final game against Resident, they wouldn't be it here. It wasn't for I Greasy in all the lead up games to that final yeah. game as well, just yeah. to get them to that final game. Because Resident was on fire. Resident was doing really well, and I don't know what was wrong with Cooks here and Marky, particularly Cooks here. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we always talk how, about how good he is, and I still stand by him being one of the best players, if not the best player in the world. 
But what was up with him? The yeah, last it, few weeks, he was missing balls completely. He was out of position. He was getting really bad 50-50s. He had that own goal <sighs> that was oh. almost heartbreaking. Uh. And, but he did get the overtime winner as well. But yeah. I think flip side matches up really well against Selfless. I mm-hmm. think they're they're going to be playing their game. They're going to be boot camping before this, and they're going to they're going to get back to the flip side that we've seen in the past. And I, and I really think that flip side, the way that they play, it matches up well against Selfless, and they're going to take them out. I'd like to hope so, but I I, I really do think that Selfless when they're on their game and they're playing their fast paces, it's going to break down what Flipside likes to do. And I think they might have to rely on solo plays. They're going to have to do the things that we see them do. Cooks are doing crazy air dribbles. Mark Adudo doing his fakes. And Greasy just being there to make sure his team doesn't fall apart. Yeah, just be <laughs> back in net. Keep things out. Don't let them fall apart. Just don't <laughs> let them do it, Greasy. Be there for them, please. So I want, I want to look at the uh, the bracket here one more time. And let's look at the, the day two matchups, match five and six here. It was, we're gonna have we're gonna have these two matchups here: the Denial Alpha Sydney, the Northern Gaming Jam gaming happen, and then those will populate into our quarterfinals. Give me your thoughts of which of these teams is making it through, and then how will those matchups against Mock and NRG go? So, in my opinion, I think OCE. If there is going to be an upset, it's going to be Alpha Sydney over Denial. But I still think Denial is going to make this through, make it through to Mock it, and Northern Gaming will make it through to NRG. And honestly, NRG is going to have a handful. Like they, they're coming as the top seed, but I bet they would much rather play the leftovers than play Northern Gaming, even with Turbo Pulsa. I don't know about that because I think the leftovers have proven that they can catch anyone off guard, and that's kind of NRG's shtick. Mm. They love to kind of be that wild card team that no one likes to go against. No one thinks they can. No one like knows how to approach them. And I think going against the leftovers, they both kind of have that. I don't know how you're gonna play. Are you gonna? Are you about to like destroy me and do really well? Or are you gonna kind of underperform? And I. I still stand by it. I think Alpha Sydney is going to upset. I think they're going to take out Denial. Uh, after watching it, I mean, w- when you just see what OCE can pull off, everyone loves to be like, oh, like OCE can't do this. Like North American Europe is just going to destroy them. Like, did you watch this season? Like we had teams underperform all the time. Denial got shut out. Like they, they didn't score a single game, a goal in three games. So like, like we did see that. Yeah. We did see that happen. Both regions had their fair share of like just being weak constantly. And since OCE is so isolated, I think it's really unfair to just be like, well, they're not going to perform at all. They're not going to do well. Because mm-hmm. mechanically, they're just as good. You saw some of the touches and shots those guys were making. It's things we would go nuts for over there in the booth. So I think they've got just as big a shot as anybody else. And this is why I love that we have world championships like this. Because we can sit here all day and build like very decent, you know, defendable arguments about why you know, OCE is going to get stomped on or why they're going to show up and surprise everybody and we'll never know until we actually see it happen in Los Angeles and I'm so excited to see those matches. These guys are going to be playing for a huge prize pool here. I'm pretty sure it's $55,000 goes to first place. Number yes, one. I'm right about that. That is so much money. Oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah, this is, and again, Gibbs talks about it every time. This is only divided between three players. Mm. So it, it's going to be a huge check for these guys. And this is on top of what they already took home for making league play, what they, where they placed in midseason mayhem, mm-hmm. how they placed in the North American and European and Oceanic Championship. So this is on top of all of that. Yeah. So 55K up there at the top. Every single team trying to get a slice. I mean, dude, even fourth place gets 11 grand. Yeah. That's, that's a lot of money for coming in fourth when you really think about it, because these players, they all want first, even just for the sake of knowing they're the best in the world. Guaranteed 5K paycheck. Yeah. Feels yeah, good, yeah. man. You, you just, just for showing up, you're getting at least 5,000, and every time you win a series, that paycheck goes up, which has just got to feel really good for them. There is something for them to play in every single matchup, even mm. if they're not expecting to make it the whole way. Mm. But guys, it's been, it's been cool to talk about these things. I cannot wait to see them. We're going to have some predictions next about how, how we think this is all gonna go. It's gonna be great, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Hope you guys stay tuned. We'll be right back. When we come back, we'll be making predictions about the World Championship.